I need to get to Democratic Congresswoman uh, from California, Karen Bass here. Uh, Congresswoman Bass, of course, one of the lawmakers uh, that led the passage of the George Floyd and Policing Act in the House. She is also the former chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congresswoman, uh, thanks for your time this afternoon, or this morning, I guess, there where you are. Uh, just, just first of all, your, your general reaction to the opening statements from the prosecution, from the defense, um, what, what do you make of it so far, Congresswoman? Well, frankly, you know, the, the opening statements, especially from the prosecution, it was just difficult to hear. And it was very difficult to see that tape again. And frankly, I saw parts of the tape that I don't remember seeing before. And to see his knee on his neck long after he was conscious, and he just kept it there, it just seemed so cruel. And to me, it's just very hard for me to see that and not believe that he was really just punishing George Floyd. And then when I heard the defense talk about George Floyd's, you know, perhaps being intoxicated and all of that, it just seems like such an incredible stretch, not understanding what one thing had to do with the other. And I really appreciate it as a person with a medical background, really appreciated the prosecution saying that every person that is dead has died of a cardiac pulmonary arrest, that people needed to understand exactly what that meant. And when the defense tried to um, say, well, because he didn't have certain aspects in terms of the, um, the scarring on his neck or also the petechiae in his eyes that is consistent with the strangulation, that that meant that he didn't die of that was just absolutely ludicrous. So this is going to be a very painful couple of weeks as we go through this. And it's painful listening to the defense because... I just feel like their arguments out of the box are just so absurd. Hey, Congresswoman, to your point about the video, uh, there were parts that I, I don't think I had seen before, but also I found it striking to hear the running yes. commentary from the bystanders, from the folks uh, who, you could, who had gathered there to watch this. I, that was not something I recall hearing as well. Um, I know you spent some time with the family over the past year. Um, I, I've, I've spent some time with the family as well. Uh, and every time I talk to them, they talk about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Uh, and, and this perhaps being um, the greatest uh, legacy potentially uh, for George Floyd. Pass the House, um, prospects in the upper chamber, Congresswoman Bass. Well, I, I do think that the prospects are strong. And I will tell you that although there is no formal negotiation going on, conversations bipartisan are absolutely continuing. And so I hold out hope that we will be able to do it. And I just want you to know that personally, I feel the pressure of everything that is happening with that this trial on my shoulders because we have got to deliver for the American people. There has got to be hope that we can actually transform policing. And if there was ever a case that you can just not argue, it is this one. This trial has got to come out the right way and we have to deliver. I believe that we will get a bill on the president's desk. I know the White House and the president absolutely wants us to move, form, move forward and, and we have to deliver. Congresswoman, in, in most, as you know, in most significant pieces of legislation, there's typically, there's that one sticking point uh, that, that keeps it, and well, and oftentimes there are multiple sticking points, but in, in this particular piece of legislation, is there one sticking point that, that seems to be um, uh, greater than the others that, that's holding it back? Yes, there's two sticking points, qualified immunity and then Section 242, which is reducing the standard for prosecuting an officer. And so with this case, for example, you know, should you argue what Derek Chavin was thinking in terms of did he willfully mean to kill George Floyd? Or frankly, anybody with any kind of common sense knows that if you put your knee on somebody's neck, that it could result in death, and that is reckless. And so what we want to do is reduce the standard I want to argue what he, what he was thinking. I want to say that what he did was reckless. George Floyd died, and he should be prosecuted. So holding officers accountable, qualified immunity means the ability to sue the officer and holding the officer personally liable. 
and and the section 242 i think those are that those have from the very beginning been the two sticking points but there has to be a way to show that we can hold officers accountable otherwise how do you stop this from occurring Congresswoman Bass, uh, we always appreciate your time and your perspective. I know you've got to run, but do keep us posted. Um, please, ma'am, if you will, on the legislation. Uh, we want to continue to follow that part of the story very closely long after the, this trial is over. Congresswoman uh, Karen Bass there from California.